Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you another tip for building microservices in Go, specifically how to implement custom types when building REST APIs. So this is the second, actually the third part of this small series talking and discussing everything about REST APIs when building microservices. Specifically, what we're going to be discussing is how to implement the custom type for the priority field and the date field that specifically covers as well the time field is a nested type. It's not a nested type. It's the file, the field, not the file, the field that happens to be defined in the dates type. Let me show you how everything mm, is implemented. And as usual, the link to the code is in the description. So please feel free to check that out whenever you have some free time. As a reminder, the way this works is that the task for our to-do application happens to have a priority right here and it happens to have a date that indicates the start date and the due date. Now, previously what we didn't do was to define those two specific fields and therefore we didn't implement those types. So that's, that is what we're going to be doing this time. If you notice right here is that the type uh, task implements priority and dates now and it defines some types that happen to be to be available in the REST package. If you jump into priority, what you will notice is that it's actually a string. And the cool thing about this is that in order to make it work with the way JSON is implemented in Go, we need to implement two different interfaces, which uh, define one method each. So therefore we need to implement two methods. And the two methods are Marshall JSON, which is right here, and on Marshall JSON. And the same applies for the other type. So we're going to be implementing a on Marshall JSON and Marshall JSON for priority and also for dates. And actually more specifically, not for dates, but rather for the time type. And I will show you that next. What's happening here is that for priority is that instead of using the priority that we have defined right here, which is an int 8, uh, we're going to give the user, our customer that happens to be using our API, a better user experience. So instead of defining some ints that they can send us back and forth and we can send them back to them, we're going to allow the user, the customer to define, you know what, instead of using zero, use none, instead of using one, use low, instead of using two, use medium and so on and so forth. So this is a better user experience for our customers that happen to be using JSON. and and. It sort of makes our API a little bit cleaner and more usable, like I was mentioning. And for doing that is, like I said, implementing the two JSON uh, uh, methods. And with uh, that, we're, con we're going to convert them from, uh, depending if we are on marshalling or marshalling, we're, or marshalling, we're going to be converting from a slice of bytes to an actual concrete type or from the concrete type to an actual slice of bytes. One thing I define as well is that because we're converting back and forth, uh, between the different layers, I define a few methods as well that allow you to convert from the REST type to the domain type and because we need to pass in those fields back to the service layer. And for doing that, let me show you how this is implemented. Let's say we're doing a create, right? And we have a priority right here. So because priority is a type that is defined on the REST package, we need to convert that to a domain type from the rest to the domain. So the, so the method that we define here allows us to pass in those values. And similarly with the dates as well. And, and the whole point of this, again, is one of those things that works nicely with the hexagonal architecture because it allows you to take uh, values or input from a different layer which in this case is the REST API, we convert those values, we validate those values, we allow the user to, to use types that we think make, make the most sense in the context of the API, which in this case are strings and not ints like we originally defined in the domain package. We convert those, we send those back to the service and everything should be working because, because we're passing in the correct values that we need for, in this case, creating a new task. And similarly, when we're responding back to the client, we are defining a new priority function that converts what we're receiving from the domain package and converting that to the 
REST package. I know you might be thinking, sure, we can define a probably a models type that happens to be all of, doing all of this. And I was mentioning this in the previous episode. And yeah, I mean, seems like a great idea, right? You define one type that happens to be used for, you know, databases, or JSON and, and the domain type as well. But it gets complicated really quickly because you need to consider that the requests that are coming and the responses that we're sending back have different fields and they have different meaning in the context of the layer that we're using them. So if we think that, okay, we're going to be using one type, one model like type for all the layers, you're going to get in trouble really, really quickly. Um, it, it gets it gets messy and complicated. You need to trust me. And I mean, you can give it a, give it a try. Take it take it for a spin, and you will notice that it gets messy really quickly. Similarly, with the priority, there is a new type called dates, and dates happens to be defining those two fields that happen to be using another new type called time. And time is similar to priority. It happens to be defining also Marshall JSON and or Marshall JSON, and they follow the same pattern. They receive a slice or they return a slice depending if it's marshalling or off or marshalling. And then they convert back and forth with uh, the configuration or rather the business logic that we have. The cool thing about type specifically in the REST package is that we are not really, we are receiving a string and in the JSON. And we're converting that string using the time.parse and the time uh, format methods in the time package to allow the user send those strings, converting those and and, and, and make an instantiating time dot type time dot time types and then at the same time converting the time dot time uh, types into strings. It's it's a really nice uh, thing to do. Now if we look at this in practice and let me show you the live uh, example the live server so right here I have my server which is running under 9235 uh, which will be that curl x get tasks and then if I jump into my um, this one I have a task a few tasks already implemented in the database or rather safe in the database uh, oops that obviously is incorrect you will see that uh, the priority is none, which if you notice, the priority is actually none, but it's in the context of the database. And here is a string. And the dates uh, looks like zero values, which I believe are null here. Okay, that sort of makes sense. If we go back to the API and we say, you know what, let me update this thing. And uh, let me take the, um, uh, let's take the description. Let's say task, change task. Let's take priority. Now it's going to be, I don't know, high. Uh, and let's take the dates, which will be right here. And for the dates, what I'm going to be doing, the start will be 2021. Let's leave the month, the date and the month and the hour and those kind of things the same. Um, but you can change those on your own and then the same. And I have an, an issue. So what is the issue right here? And the issue is that uh, it says that the date is incorrect. Why is it incorrect? Nested brace in URL position. Hmm. This is confusing. You know what happened? You know what happened? I'm missing an argument. I'm missing D. <laughs> So because they were sending data using the put payload, we need to pass in obviously a JSON. And with that, if you notice, if I go um, and refresh this thing, again, notice the changes I made. I changed task and I put the 2021, 2022. And if I refresh the same one, which is F52, you will see the values now being set. Now, again, going back to the actual implementation, what I was telling you is that the way, the cool thing about uh, implementing custom types is that it allows you, it allows you define a better user experience for your customers, which in this case are the, the, the all the users of your API, and at the same time allows you to, um, maybe define more concrete validations on the REST layer as well, 
and and uh, again uh, uh, keeping that sort of differentiation between the different layers because in the end we're converting from what we're receiving as input in the rest api passing that down to the service layer and then converting that and then passing that down to the corresponding data store that is being used by the service and that's that's really amazing i really like that idea so i know this is sort of like a quick you know sort of like a short video but it's, it's going to be really useful and it will make sense when we combine all of these uh, three videos into the last one for when we're implementing the swagger api and you will see what i mean when we're defining you know the different rules the enums the inputs and so on and so forth and, and everything will be making more sense so again thank you for watching and, and again if you have any questions just just let me know please feel free to to leave a comment in the um, down below i will talk to you next time and as usual please keep it up and don't give up i will talk to you later see you